Hi there, everybody. This is Austin of the Best I Can Afford Antiques Channel. Um, I've got a few little pieces sitting here. I've got, um, let's see, six, eight, eight pieces. Um, they're all shoes except one thing, which is a hat, which I thought it was related because it's, you know, it's kind of early American pattern glass, um, uh, which I think at least one of these other shoes would count as. <clears throat> so let's see. So this is a Fenton piece, and if you look at the outside, you can see that it's a uh, carnival glass, and it would appear to be a cabbage rose pattern, which I think is very pretty. I've got a vase that's this too. I like that so much. My wife doesn't like it when I wear these because she says they uh, lose value every time I take them outside you know she heard that from she heard that from shoe collectors you know what let me uh let me raise this up a bit so he's not getting any of the color from any of the other ones isn't that beautiful i really do love that all right um we'll handle all the fenton ones first so let's talk about fenton this is going to be a Fenton hobnail piece. Now, a lot of people get mixed up on what hobnail is exactly. They just kind of call anything with protrusions like this hobnail. And I'm guilty. You know, I've done it before. But uh, hobnail are kind of sharp. You see how kind of pointy they are? So if you see anything that's not that sharp, it's probably not hobnail. This is, again, a Fenton hobnail piece. I'm sure other companies have made hobnail. You can see there's a little chip at the heel here, but... But yeah, I don't, I don't care too much. Um, this is selenium, actually. This is a, uh, it fluoresces a bright pink when you shine it with a uh, UV light or anything. So that's pretty neat shoe. <clears throat> Let's see. This shoe is Fenton hobnail, and again, you can see it's pretty pointy. And you know, you can compare that to your pieces that you think might be hobnail or anything. Hobnail is definitely kind of pointy, and just because it's not pointy doesn't mean it's not Fenton. Fenton has uh, another pattern called Moonstone, so uh, that's that's like a uh, almost like a hobnail, but uh, it's much more rounded. So yeah, isn't that neat? <laughs> I really am like such a huge fan of these. My wife was like. So you got those to sell, right? And I was like, well, you know, because <laughs> I'm, I'm such a fancy lady. <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't know if I want to sell them or not. <laughs> such an idiot. I really don't know if I want to sell them or not. Like, I think I could maybe get rid of like one or two, but, but I don't want to get rid of all of them for certain. I believe this will be another hobnail and look how pointy that guy is. Um, let's see if we see a mark on that. I haven't really that closely inspected these. Like I say, I always wait to like check everything out until we're together. It's kind of neat how the way it scoops out like that. It's kind of cool. It's also fun that it's got the little hobnail bit on the bottom there for like no good reason. But yeah, isn't that pretty? I really do like these. Not even just whistling Dixie. This is another Fenton piece. I've seen this in uh, like a ruby glass, but I haven't seen it in a milk glass like this. And I really like the hand painting. I like all the Fenton hand painted pieces. I don't know why people would hold that against them. I, I've seen in uh, certain groups and stuff that people talk about, uh, you know, how they'll scrape the paint off of stuff and stuff. And I'm just like, Ugh, you seem gross to me, but that's fine, I guess. You bought it, you paid for it, I guess do what you want just destroy somebody else's effort and hard work and stuff that's that's fine that's fine you just, you just do what you like <laughs> you might be able to tell that i'm not fine with it <laughs> i believe this is again going to be a fenton piece although i don't think it's marked anywhere isn't that neat that we get to look at all this stuff and see where they're marked and stuff did you notice the mark on the uh on the cabbage rose one so that must be a pretty modern piece, but you can see that it's got a little embossed mark there. Can you see that in the uh, in the rainbow there? That's kind of fun. 
and I don't think you can feel it or well yeah you can feel it just a tiny tiny bit but I'm not seeing that any of these other ones are marked so they must be maybe pre-1970 is when just about everything Fenton was marked I'm not positive though and I'm sure there's times where they've had stickers but not an embossed or I mean a uh, you know a real mark am I thinking embossed so yeah these are little containers whatever they're supposed to hold this one might be pretty aptly called a uh, toothpick holder so it's kinda got exactly that that amount of storage area in it I do think they're so beautiful I believe this one's Fenton and it's called Daisy and Button uh, the pattern is called Daisy and Button we might have too much white behind us it's kind of hard to see because this is a pretty pale one but I do yeah they're just so gorgeous aren't they you can see on the other side more clearly here's a daisy and here's a button um let's see we've talked briefly about this before but this is a Vaseline glass hat and a lot of people have it attributed to Fenton but I think it might be LG Wright and I would think that this counts as early American pattern glass. Oh, and I was thinking that this one might also count as early American pattern glass, but I'm not positive on that. But I do think this fellow would count. And uh, Vaseline glass, that's not as much of a later in the 20th century thing. I think it's, it, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but I think it's less common. So I think, you know, depression glass at, at the latest. Isn't he cool? And boy, does he shine. Let me tell you. I wonder if it'll even... Um, I don't know where my black light is right now. I put it somewhere the other day. <laughs> nope, I don't know. I don't know. And this little tiny last shoe. Let's see if we can focus and get the hat out from behind him so we can see him better. This little tiny last shoe. Look how... Look at how small that is. Oh my god. It, it's so precious. So precious. <laughs> this says, what's that say? Um Oh, I R I D E S. So maybe it's supposed to say iridescent. Maybe it was supposed to just say iridescent. But this is a little carnival glass shoe. Uh, I agree that it's called iridescent, like the um, shimmer effect there. But uh, this is Guernsey glass. And isn't that a handsome, just a handsome little thing. I don't know what you would be supposed to do with this, but uh, I don't know. I, I, what a fantastic decoration. So let's, uh, let's put everybody back here. Look at some shoes anybody with a uh, foot thing you know <laughs> I don't want to invite too many people with a foot thing to my channel <laughs> get real weird real quick <laughs> oh, dumbest antiques channel ever so yeah this is Austin the best I can afford antiques channel you know what I'm gonna add this I'm gonna add this ceramic shoe here for no good reason just because it's another shoe <laughs> This is Austin at the Best Second 40 Antiques channel. Always a pleasure talking to everybody. I hope you learned something from me. I hope I teach you something one day and it makes you money or at least gets you something beautiful. Really, like, I don't care if you make money off of stuff. I don't need you to, like, I don't need you to go out and buy stuff and try and flip it and make money. What I'd like for everybody to do is realize that you can just go out and get art. You can go out and get fantastic, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful art for just pennies, dollars sometimes. So much of this stuff I have thrifted. This was all at Susan's garage sale. Or, well, no, I guess this wasn't in Susan's garage sale. This was kind of a different thing. But, but still, I mean, <clears throat> you know, five or ten dollars, you could have one of these shoes. If you spend that enough times, I mean, you have as many things as I do. It's, it's that simple. I mean, I've spent four dollars and I have like the coolest set of glasses I've ever owned in my life you know I mean you go to the thrift store and who knows what kind of magic and and just cool stuff is in there for just pennies so I mean I don't as much care if you want to like flip stuff and stuff like that 
Like, that's not really why I do any of this stuff. So that's not what I'm trying to motivate you into or anything. I do this because I actually love all this stuff. Like, I have a tough time selling it. I uh, <laughs> It's definitely the worst part of this for me. Like, like I don't want I don't want this stuff to leave. So I mean, I'd rather just look at most of it, especially when you see that like something's worth twenty dollars or something like that's, you know. And don't get me wrong, I mean you do that a hundred times, and twenty dollars makes a lot of difference. But, but yeah, most of the time I'm just like, oh, twenty dollars. I'd rather just have the thing. <laughs> so, so here I am with a bunch of stuff that's probably worth like twenty dollars, and I'm just like, oh well, f I mean. <laughs> Yeah, but I own it, so it's worth more than that to me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. Everybody, this is Austin, the Best Second of 40 Antiques channel. I absolutely adore you guys. Thank you for subscribing. And again, I hope you learned something, and I hope you can teach me something one day. Love you guys.